Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of long overdue videos that are really easy to make. Uh, anyway, in today's video we're going to compare the Ghibellini Proxima and the Intrepid Mark IV, 4x5. Um, this is the newest version of the Intrepid, bought it new, the Ghibellini Proxima bought it new, so both of them are in good condition and they're both entry level 4x5 cameras. And they're two cameras that people are often attracted to looking at when they're looking at buying their first new 4x5 right now. So let me get this into portrait so that they're both, otherwise I'm going to freak out. Firstly, I'm not gonna go and read the spec sheets to you. If you guys are that interested in the specs, you've got the ability to check out the Wikipedia or the manufacturer's pages yourselves and do that. What I'm gonna focus on are how these cameras are different from a usability standpoint, because realistically that's gonna be what differentiates them for you. The um, difference of all 4x5 cameras are gonna use the same lenses. 4x5 lenses are 100% system agnostic. All you need to do is get a lens board that's sized the correct way, and you're good to go getting that lens into your camera. So the differences come down to interface, size, weight, and a handful of other things. Max and minimum extension are very important as well. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go over things like that in this video. The Ghibellini is lighter than the Intrepid. It's also significantly larger. So if we take a look at the Ghibellini here, try to hold this here and hope to God that I don't drop one of these. So if you look at the two cameras next to each other, the Ghibellini is significantly larger. It also has things like these flying buttresses coming off of it that make it not quite as easy to throw in and out of a bag as the Intrepid, which doesn't have any of that. Everything is within the bounds of the largest dimension of the camera. So this is less likely to get snagged on stuff when you pull it out of a backpack or a camera bag. And that is very nice. It also, as you can see, folds down a little bit smaller um, and is significantly more robust in terms of construction. It's just made very nicely. Metal parts, plywood parts, it's very sturdy. PLA 3D printed parts, very lightweight, very uh, carryable, not quite as sturdy. I have a Tele Arton 360mm F. 5.6 right here. It's the heaviest 4x5 lens that I own weighing, feels like it's about four and a half or five pounds. And this camera really struggles with this and my Schneider 210 millimeter f5.6 if I want to do anything other than rise and fall. If I try to do shift or, or I'm sorry, if I try to do any tilt on the front standard with these, these lenses fight back and tend to throw off the tilt significantly. Uh, does the Intrepid do that? I can't tell you because I haven't put any lenses in the Intrepid yet because I'm gonna finish up with the Ghibellini and its review and how-to video uh, or videos before I get involved with the Intrepid. I just don't want to be changing lens boards back and forth every time I go out shooting four by five. Okay, so bigger, and smaller and lighter, bigger and smaller and heavier, bigger and lighter. These two also set up differently. And this is a difference that some people will like and some people will hate. With the Ghibellini, you loosen the, the rear standard adjustments and then you fold it upwards. Next, we're going to loosen all four of the front standard adjustments here and here with the Ghibellini the slugs, or the grubs rather, that come out of, the threaded grubs that come out of the standards are super, super short. If you over loosen these, the knobs will fall off very easily. It's fine if you're in the studio and can just go pick them up off the ground. It is not fine if you're on top of a mountain and they fall down between rocks. So once you have this out, uh, loosened rather, you're going to rack out the focus with this threaded screw in the back doesn't lock, but it is, does have enough friction that it's not, I've never had a problem with focus shifting on this camera. Once you've racked it out a bit, you unfold the Ghibellini this way, 
And you want to rack it out far enough that the standards here do not bunch up against the bellows. Next, we're going to drop the Ghibellini to its middle point. Tighten up the front standards. There we go. And next, we're going to collapse this. Now, coincidentally, if you have that Schneider or Kaltar, as I have it, it's Kaltar branded, 210 millimeter, this is darn near infinity focus with that lens. It's also darn near infinity focus with the Schneider 360 Tele Arton because that is a telephoto lens, not a standard long lens design. So that's really nice. If you are shooting either of those lenses or probably any other 210 millimeter lens or lens with a 210 millimeter focal distance, this is pretty darn close to infinity and that's really useful. Okay, to set up the Intrepid, we first are going to loosen the rear standard. So far, it's the same. Now we're going to tighten it once the rear standard is up. Now things are different. You'll notice the Intrepid has a loose um, front standard. There are four quarter 20 threaded uh, female plugs here and a quarter 20 male here. What you do is then select one of these four based on your lens focal length. So if you're shooting a wide angle lens, you screw it in back here. If you're shooting a long lens, you screw it in up here or anywhere in between. If you're shooting a wide lens and you can't get it all the way down, then you just loosen the front standard and raise it a bit. And now you can screw it into the rearmost opening. Quite frankly, Intrepid, if you happen to watch this, a fifth one of these back here, another centimeter and a half or two would be really useful for those of us who shoot 75 and 90 millimeter lenses. So we're going to put this all the way out to the front here just so that these look relatively the same. Once you line up the screw, now you have to tighten it. There we go. Until it's in place. Come on. There we go. Now we're going to zero this to center point, which I'm going to have to eyeball it because I haven't marked it yet. Looks about like that. So now we have both of our 4x5s set up and you can't see me anymore, which is what everybody on this channel has wanted for 10 years anyway. So uh, here we go. These are, the, these are the both set up. Now to focus, as I said, with the Ghibellini, you just rotate the screw in the back. Same thing with the Intrepid. The Intrepid has more friction than the Ghibellini does, and I like that a great deal. It also has slightly finer threads than the Ghibellini does, which means you get finer focus with the Intrepid, but it takes longer to reach fine focus. You'll have to just rotate the knob more. So those are minor differences. They Fundamentally, most everything else is the same on these in terms of you can shoot landscape or portrait on both of them. You can shoot landscape in either direction so that you can point the opening of the film back away from the sun. They each have a two bubble level setup. Well, this one now has a one bubble level. I thought it had two at first. No, okay. This has two bubble levels on the front. This has one, two on the back, and two on the back to help with getting things uh, nice and lined up. Now, this is where things are going to start to get different because the Ghibellini has more ability to focus lenses well and easily. So let's slide this out of the way for a little bit. We're going to, I'm going to show you with the Ghibellini how to focus a close focus lens, like a wide angle. So firstly, you're going to put the front standard all the way back in these grooves. Next, we're going to rack the rear standard all the way forward in the grooves. And that's something like a 60 millimeter lens right there. I forget what the uh, shortest lens the Ghibellini can take is, but my 90 millimeter lens focuses past infinity like this. So does my 75 although it's a retro focus design with a 103 millimeter focal length. Um, so it should focus past infinity like this, but this is, and then if you need to go even closer for some reason, like if you have a 47 millimeter lens, 
you can eke a little bit more out of it by pushing the front standard back a little further. And that I want to say is somewhere around 50 millimeters, give or take. Um, and that's pretty darn close, uh, pretty darn good close focus point for using a lens. Now, when you're, so when you're shooting wide angle, then you put your lens in here. I'm going to pretend that this lens, uh, actually can't pretend with that one. Anyway, you're gonna put your lens in here and then you're going to rack the focus out until you achieve infinity focus and then continue racking until you focus on something closer if you're shooting something closer than infinity. So this is how you use the Ghibellini for close focus. What? Something just fell. I feel like something just fell off my camera. Anyway, I'll find it if it did. With the Intrepid, this is a slightly different process. If you want to switch from a longer lens to a shorter lens, you're going to have to unscrew the front standard. You're going to have to screw the front standard in to the rearmost threaded opening. And this is, this is realistically as far back as you're going to be able to focus because there is no asymmetrical tilt built into the front standard, which means that I cannot move this back any further. So if I want, now here's the other thing. With a 75 or a 90 millimeter lens, this is going to be in the photo right now. And I know that because I've used the 90, I, I set this up with the 90 millimeter lens and I could see the front standard in the image when it was mounted into this camera. So what you have to do to shoot wide angle is loosen your tripod head, tilt the camera down like this, retighten your tripod head, loosen your rear standard, loosen your front standard, and anyway, what you, would, what you need to do at that point is then uh, bring this upward and get the front standard to actually do what it is supposed to do here. There we go. And tilt backwards like this. So your front standard is both centered on plane and parallel with the rear. Now the issue as you can see here is that this is way more than 90 millimeters. So even though I think, I forget what the minimum focus distance on this is, in practical application, it is very, very hard to actually focus a wide angle lens because the drop bed design necessarily means that you're going to lose focal length uh, capabilities. So this is as wide right here as the Intrepid can go. If there's some way to make it go wider, I don't know what it is. So um, if there is a way to switch this screw plate around so that this is the back, uh, I don't know what that is either, but that would be incredibly useful. So for me, who shoots a lot of 75 and 90 millimeter large format lens, uh, uses those as my primary lenses in a lot of shoots, this is a significant problem you need to get what's called a recessed lens board that actually sets the lens back inside the camera's body. And that just adds an added layer of complexity and cost to using the camera. So that's, um, then, so that's, that's how you use the camera for wide and long lenses. Next thing let's talk about is how you use the camera for movements and what movements each camera has available to you as a user. So both cameras have a very similar set of movements, but the Ghibellini has a couple of extra tricks up its sleeves. In fact, the Ghibellini has more movements, I should say, to be most accurate, than the Intrepid. Starting with the Ghibellini, if we loosen these two screws on the front, we now can get a whole lot of swing as well as shift. Let me turn this here so you can see that a little bit better. We loosen these screws and you can shift back and forth 
and swing from side to side. There we go. And as you can see, there are no zero detents on this camera, so I marked my own. And when we get to where we need to be, whether it's at zero or it's some swing and some shift, you can do that. Okay. The other thing that the Ghibellini can do, another trick up its sleeve, it can of course do the rear tilts, which we saw demonstrated with the Intrepid. And for that, all you have to do is loosen these two screws and now you can tilt back a pretty decent amount and tilt forward a, a ton. So this has way more movement in both the front and back than you will ever need as a photographer. So if you loosen these two screws at the base of the standard on, on the Ghibellini, you get a limited amount of rear shift. This limited amount is way more than you will ever need as a photographer. This is a, it doesn't look like much, but you don't have to shift much on the rear to get a ton of effect. So this is, I've never come close to using this much shift on the rear. And honestly, most of the time when I use shift, it's on the front because it's just a little bit easier to control. But on the rear, you can also swing the rear from side to side. So you get swing and shift on the rear standard as well as the front. Now for landscape work and architecture work as well, that is exceedingly powerful because it gives you a ton of ability to shoot wide and have near perfect depth of field for deep subjects. And that's a strong plus in the corner of the Ghibellini. On the Intrepid, the only rear movement is going to be swing, uh, tilt, rather. If you loosen these two nuts, you can now tilt it forward and back. So this is really good for architecture and landscape to control depth of field across the image, but you're not going to get any left, to left and right control. With the front standard, you can loosen it and you get rise and fall. There's these outer knobs which you can loosen to get uh, your shift like this. And we'll just tighten these back up to hold it in place. And then if you want to get swing, um, tilt rather, for this plane, you can now loosen up this knob to get some swing as well as a pretty significant degree of shift. There we go, let's tighten that back up. So the front standard movements on the Intrepid are exceptional and they have fewer things to dial in and to tighten and loosen at once. So this has a simpler interface on the front. I'm not gonna lie. I like the front interface on the Intrepid better than I do on the Ghibellini, especially I was shooting the Ghibellini on two or three days ago and it was 30 degrees and there were 25, 30 mile per hour winds and I couldn't use my gloves of course on these knobs and they got incredibly hard to turn. In the cold, I ended up having to take my hands and sandwich the knobs like this and then rotate the knobs by by uh, shifting my hands like that because I could not, <laughs> didn't have the finger strength when were, my fingers were numb to do it. One of the nice things about the Intrepid is that this has a wing nut style screw at the center of the front standard. And to that end, I would submit that something that would go a long way for the Ghibellini to making it more useful would be to replace all of these round screws with wing nuts. The front standard on the Intrepid also has a couple of marks that you can use to line up with the plane, uh, the, the mounting plane here, to achieve central positioning. So it is easier to zero the Intrepid than it is to zero the Ghibellini. But the Ghibellini is also easier to switch between lenses with, simply because anytime you want to switch lenses with the Intrepid, you've got to unscrew it. And just as a matter of personal preference, I'm not a big fan of having this flopping around. And I also find the screwing in it with the Intrepid to be a little bit trickier than it should be. Uh, something about the 3D printed part here on the base is very particular about the angle it has to be at for the screw to thread easily. 
which one should you get? That is probably what brought you here and what you want to know. The answer to that is it's up to you and it's up to your needs. If you shoot landscapes and architecture in a lot of wide lenses, I'm gonna to point to the Ghibellini simply because it is easier to use wide lenses on this camera and you get more movements with this camera with wide lenses than you do with the Intrepid. If you shoot a lot of normal lenses, anything in the 150 to 250 range, the Intrepid could be a much better choice for you because it is a bit more sturdy. Those lenses tend to be a little bit heavier and in that range, it gives you all of the movements you need. Yes, you're not gonna get shift and uh, swing on the back, you don't. And if you need those, then you're gonna be looking at the Ghibellini only. But this is sturdier and with a heavier lens, that can be a huge benefit. So, next question is which one am I going to keep? Neither. I love the Ghibellini interface. I love the Intrepid build quality. So after I've made my Ghibellini video uh, series, which will happen in the not distant future, I'm going to do the same thing for the Intrepid. And at that point, I will help these cameras find owners who are going to be able to use them on a regular basis. And I'll be upgrading to the top end Ghibellini. Um, my experience with this camera has led me to the ultimate conclusion that the Ghibellini interface is the one that I want to go with and stick with for my large format work. Um, it's just that this one is a little bit too light duty for some of my lenses and I need one that's a little bit sturdier. So, won't lie, I'm sold on this camera's interface and uh, between these two, I would suggest going, looking strongly at the Ghibellini if you want to have the most number of movements you can get and the added bulk isn't an issue for you. But if you're looking for the smallest thing you can get with the greatest stability in this price point, that's gonna be the Intrepid. This is an incredibly rock solid camera and the build quality on it is simply stunning. Intrepid makes a very, very good camera. So no knocks against them at all. This is a wonderful piece of, craft, of craftsmanship and uh, if somebody told me that this was their favorite 4x5 camera, I'd say that's a good choice. No, no issues with that at all. It's really well made and really well designed. So long and short of it is you're not going to go wrong with either one of them. It just depends on realistically the types of lenses you're going to shoot and what you're looking for in a camera. Both of them are going to do well by you, and I hope that this video helped you to understand the differences between the two cameras so that you can make an informed decision about which one to continue looking at if you're looking at upgrading or switching to or buying a different 4x5 camera for a specific use. Thank you for watching this video. Please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know that I'm on the right track producing content which is useful and helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below. I'm pretty good about checking these every couple of days and answering questions. If you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, and if I have the technical know-how and equipment, I'm more than happy to make those. One last thing, thank you everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I gotta get up, Steinbeck. I have to turn off the camera.